And we start off with a countdown to tomorrow's big inflation print. Economists expecting consumer prices rose six-tenths of a percent in August, a faster clip than in July. The data coming as oil prices hit 10-month highs. WTI closing in on 90 bucks a barrel, the highest it has been since last November. Crude oil now up 40 percent from its May lows. So how is the Fed dissecting these numbers? And could the uptick in prices put an end to consumer confidence? Rebecca, you brought this up. Um, this could actually cause CPI to look higher. Right. So if consensus is close to reality tomorrow, we're getting the core prices continuing to decelerate. I think the Fed will take comfort in that, even though core at 4.3 percent isn't even close to the Fed's target. So I think a September pause, which is fully priced in, is the most likely outcome. I think the bigger deal here is what's going on with energy and commodities. The Fed tries to look through it. But at the same time, they don't ignore it. What we saw in the New York Fed's consumer expectation survey, which was released today, was that inflation expectations, commodity price expectations, both are going up. At the same time, people's expectations for jobs are going down. So you're getting a consumer that gets very nervous, and this could affect how much the Fed can act, what they should do. So I, I do think they are going to be watching oil, not overreacting to any short-term blip, but definitely it's going to be on their radar screen over the coming months. I think they realize, listen, I can't speak for them. I think they realize they're sort of in a bit of a pickle here. And we've said for months that in the fall, and I think we're pretty much September's in the fall, we're going to start to see a reacceleration of inflation. And the numbers you just put up basically back that up. In terms of energy, Tim can speak to this. You stay with the space. It's working. OIH is now at a five-year high. Valero, for example, is within a whisper of an all-time high. All these energy names, valuations are reasonable despite the recent run-ups. And I think people are underestimating, I don't know, sort of the runway and sort of the, the, the I guess, sort of the, the green lights that this entire space seems to have in front of them. So I guess there's two ways we teach two ways to trade, and that is from the prism of the Fed, but also the prism from investors in terms of energy equity. So where do you want to go here? So I'll first just talk about the market and the prism of investors around the Fed, which is I think we've gotten a lot of good news out of better and more benign inflation prints. I think the market's running out of gas on that. I think we've seen it over the last couple of prints. Um, I think if you look at where real rates are around 2%, uh, that, you know, back to valuations, this is where the equity multiple really starts to hit the road. And, and, and in other words, rubber hits the road. And I think we're probably two to three turns on the S&P on the multiple. Energy equities, um, first of all, when we start to hear OPEC is actually starting to increase supply, that's very bullish for oil. Um, and I think we, if you look at where inventories are right now overall, uh, I don't think inventories get a whole lot better in the near term. So I think, and I mentioned this two days ago, some of the data I'm seeing is that inventory levels are back at the lows of 2000. I think oil stays here. I think oil uh, equities uh, are a very different story. They are a investment, not a trade. And I've said that for a long time just because I think that oil companies are run differently. So I think you, you love this trade. 4.6% uh, of the S&P. I think that index is going higher. And I think it's a place for people to hide out. Yeah, it's interesting. When you talk about the consumer, though, um, and we talk about inflation, I, I think that headline from Walmart last week was really interesting. If you want to put wage inflation. All-time highs in Walmart. Well, all-time highs, yeah. But, but interestingly, uh, pendulums seem to have shifted, right? Like, more. Like, right, no, well, well, yes. I mean, like, so, so if we have energy going back up, right, and we have wage inflation that might have topped out, that's some of the readings we have, to the point where Walmart, one of the largest employers in our country, feels like they can now cut starting wages, right? And we know that that sliver of a consumer that is going to work at a Walmart, energy prices moving up the way that they have precipitously is probably not a good scenario for them. And we think about the consumer here. So we could be, like, literally on the precipice of a bit of a shift. We've been waiting for this consumer to weaken. This might be the moment. Yeah, it feels that like we're sort of in this Goldilocks Goldilocks period where it hasn't fully hit the consumer yet. Walmart's CEO just today at a Goldman Sachs retail conference is talking about how the consumer is holding up better than had been expected. And this contrasts to sort of the conservative approach that they were taking in terms of guidance when it came to reporting their earnings back in August. So we're sort of here. The consumer is still employed. They may be feeling worse. They may start be starting to pay more at the pump and, and for all those, you know, energy-related expenses. But they've still got money at this moment in time.